Let's talk about audio for the ATEM Minis. This video applies to the ATEM Mini, Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, Extreme, and Extreme ISO. If you're struggling to get proper sounding audio coming out of your ATEM, this video should clear a few things up. As you know, the ATEMs have two audio inputs labeled Mic 1 and Mic 2. You can also bring in audio through one of the HDMI inputs, so whether it's a video playing from a laptop or sound from a microphone plugged into the camera, all of these feeds can be brought in to a live stream. Keep in mind you'll need to press the on button to enable audio on mic inputs 1 and 2, as well as on the HDMI inputs. You'll find these buttons on the ATEM itself, or alternatively, you can control this in the software control by clicking over to the audio tab where you'll find columns for each microphone input. At the very bottom of each column, there's an on button you can click to turn on audio for that input. One other important note is that there is an AFV button and it doesn't stand for America's Funniest Videos. AFV stands for Audio Follows Video. You typically use AFV if you only want the audio to be heard when you cut to that camera as the active angle in the program feed. It's a great option to make sure there's no accidents in videos playing back into the live stream when they're not being shown live. This means if you're queuing up a video and you are scrubbing through, whether on a computer or a hyperdeck, your audio won't play out to the live stream so long as AFV is active and the audio on button is disengaged. This is why the mic inputs 1 and 2 do not have an AFV button since these inputs are not associated with any of the HDMI inputs. Now, one of the most important settings that people often miss is the line and mic setting in the ATEM software control. Let's start by clicking the gear icon in the lower left corner and navigating to the audio tab. Here you'll find settings for split audio and general. Click on the General tab, and here you'll find settings for AFV and for the analog audio inputs. The AFV settings allow you to adjust whether or not the audio is a hard cut on a transition, or if you'd like a subtle fade between audio feeds when transitioning. I like adding a gradual fade, so I'll select Add a Transition to Audio when switching. This means if I cut from the mic 1 audio of someone speaking to the HDMI input 1 audio of a video playing back, the audio won't abruptly change, but rather it will fade from one to the other. Below that, we have settings for mic input 1 and mic input 2 to be set to microphone or line, and this is where most mistakes happen. You need to set this based on the audio feed that you are sending into the ATEM. If your audio feed is coming directly from a microphone, it will most likely be set to mic level. But if it's coming from an audio mixer or a different device, it will probably be line. You'll know pretty quickly if this is set incorrectly because your sound may be extremely loud and distorted or it might be completely too quiet. Either way, it'll be obvious when you test audio. Once you have this set properly, you can click done and make your way back to the main audio screen. One more setting you'll want to adjust in the ATEM software control is your audio delay. If you notice that the audio is off by a couple of frames from the video since the audio feed is being sent in from a mixer separately from the video feeds over HDMI, then you can add up to 8 frames of audio delay. You can find the audio delay setting on the audio page just under the input knobs at the top of the screen. Here you can see an icon that looks like an arrow pointing to a number. Click on this icon and you'll get a knob to add up to 8 frames of audio delay. In my research, I've never needed more than 4 or 5 frames of delay, and I don't recommend adjusting this while you are live because it will temporarily have a blip in the audio. There are more in-depth features with the ATEM, like the equalizer and dynamics, and if you are a trained audio professional then you'll have a lot of fun customizing these. Outside of that, my other recommendation is to head on over to your multi-view settings and enable the audio meters in your multi-view monitor. You can do this by clicking on the gear icon in the bottom left-hand corner, select the multi-view tab, and then in each camera input, you can enable the levels by clicking the audio level meter icon. I'll usually enable this if I'm sending audio through a camera or disable it if I'm sending audio through a mic input. If you find you're having trouble with your audio, be sure to use headphones to monitor. 
The A10 Mini Extreme and Extreme ISO have a headphone port, while the Mini, Mini Pro, and Mini Pro ISO will need to be monitored from a headphone port on an external monitor taking a feed from the HDMI output. That's all for this ATEM quick tip. See you in the next video.